All right, uh, this last set of notes uh, for this first chapter will help you with the upcoming labs that we are performing this week, uh, where we'll be looking at motion, but looking at specific graphs of motion, whether it might be distance, velocity, or acceleration. Uh, for instance, if we had an object moving like this, um, using plain English, we could describe the motion as being uh, constant speed, right? It was going the same speed the whole time. Also constant velocity since its direction was always to the right. But another way that you can answer this question uh, without words is graphically. Uh, so in this particular case here, right, if we had uh, plotted velocity on our vertical axis and time on our horizontal axis, because velocity was constant of some value, right, it maintained that velocity the whole time. So we get this, you know, straight horizontal graph here. You can use this graph and actually answer some other things kind of like we were doing with the equations last week, solving for distance, velocity, all right, and other types of things. Right? If we were to look at the area beneath the graph in this case, um, that would actually give us something. And it, here it would give you the distance traveled. This isn't something you have to memorize. You can look at the graph and kind of figure it out because in this case, if your velocity is constant, if you draw the area beneath this graph, notice you get this rectangle. And you know to take the area of a rectangle, you just need to take the base and multiply by the height. And in this case, the base is time. The height is your velocity. And when you multiply those two things together, you can even just look at the units. You're taking time. You're multiplying by velocity. The seconds cancel, and you're left with units of meters. So we must be finding distance from this. Using the same graph, you can actually find a different quantity if you look at the slope of the graph. Right? So to redraw, right? in this case, we'd, we would actually find the acceleration. All right? If we take uh, that graph once again, uh, look at it a little bit more in depth, right? you know that finding the slope of a line involves finding the rise over the run. In math class, it might have been uh, presented to you as the change in y over the change in x. And in this case, our y-axis has velocity on it, which is measured in meters per second. Time is on the x. It's measured in seconds. When we divide those units, we wind up getting meters per second squared, which are the units of acceleration. Just some comments here. For this case that we just looked at, we had a horizontal slope. It does not rise at all, hence its slope is zero. Uh, so if we have constant velocity, which we started with, it means the acceleration is zero. Right. So we're going to be using this fact um, on our first lab tomorrow, uh, where you'll literally be trying to find the acceleration due to gravity of a freely falling object. Now, we can also look at distance, right? So if we had an object moving at a constant velocity, it would pick up distance at a gradual rate. So notice we get a straight line here up and to the right with a positive slope. Right? In this case, if we looked at the area as well as the slope of this graph, we can try to figure out if we're getting anything useful from that. Right. First off, if we look at the um, slope, here our rise over run is distance over time. So we wind up getting units of meters divided by seconds. So in this case, the slope of a distance time graph would actually give us the velocity or speed of the object. If we were to look at the area beneath this graph, you see you kind of get a triangle here you still wind up having uh, base times height, but multiplied by a half. If you go through this, though, and look at the units, right, the base is in seconds, or sorry, um, yes, the base is in seconds, the height's in meters. 
Meters times seconds are no units that we have even dealt with at this point. It isn't a physical quantity, so we get nothing from that. You can look at acceleration time graphs, but in this class we are only going to deal with something that has either zero acceleration or constant acceleration. So um, it'll either look like this or zero. Um, specifically, if something was in free fall, this would be at 9.8. That would be the value on the axis. But we could look at other situations where you know, the acceleration might be a different constant value, not 9.8. Kind of last question to check your understanding. Um, if we specifically look at an object that's in free fall, uh, what would its velocity time graph look like? Well, if we were to drop the object, right, it would start with a velocity of nothing, but then it would pick up 9.8 meters per second each second. So you would wind up getting a graph here that is increasing, and specifically the slope of this graph would be 9.8 um, or 10 if we round it to 10 meters per second squared as as we've done in class you know over the last week or so okay. same exact question right or same situation but now if we look at the acceleration time graph well we kind of already mentioned it right it's a constant 9.8 meters per second squared, so if we were to graph the acceleration, we get a line going straight across with a value of 9.8. Okay. Lastly, we can also look at the distance versus time graph for the same situation. Um, and you'll wind up getting something that's not a line at all. You'll wind up getting a parabolic um, graph, sometimes referred to as a quadratic. Notice the distance is zero at the beginning. And because the object is picking up speed, it'll pick up distance quicker and quicker and quicker. Um, it kind of goes along with the formula that we've already looked at, right? Distance equals one-half at squared. Uh, and notice the time is squared, and when you have a graph that looks like y equals x squared, you wind up getting a parabola. Um, you'll be investigating these types of graphs in the labs that are upcoming this week. Um, having this background will help you when you start to um, make those, analysis, uh, those analyses of motion this week.